All right, so today we're going to be talking about electrophilicity um, and just how different molecules can interact with each other. So the first thing we want to talk about is just what is electrophilicity. And the easiest way to think about this and explain it is just with a simple ketone. So when a molecule is electrophilic, that means it's susceptible to lone pair attack from another molecule. So we can see with the ketone right here how that is the case. Ketones are fairly electrophilic. And it's because this oxygen right here is able to withdraw electron density from the carbon. So what we find is there's actually a partial negative up here on the oxygen, and there's a partial positive down here on the carbon. And you can see that even better if you were to draw the, a resonance form of this. You'd have a minus charge up there on the oxygen and a plus charge down here. And so we're going to talk about a few different molecules and explain why they are more or less electrophilic than other molecules. So the first thing I'm going to just talk about is the ketone and the aldehyde. When we compare these two molecules, the aldehyde is actually more electrophilic than the ketone. And it's simply because of, of uh, hyperconjugation from these CH3s. So in this molecule right here, the hydrogens are hyperconjugating into the CO pi star LUMO. So with that, the, that helps stabilize the LUMO. In the aldehyde, we only have one CH3 where those hydrogens can hyperconjugate into the LUMO making the aldehyde more electrophilic. So furthering the discussion about electrophilicity, we need to continue to compare now this ketone to this acyl chloride and answer the question between these two molecules, which one would be more electrophilic? So again, Corbin talked about why the ketone is electrophilic or fairly electrophilic because of this net positive charge that builds up on this carbon, then the net negative charge on the oxygen, which we can clearly see in the resonance form. There is some stabilization with the hyperconjugation that comes from these vicinal hydrogens to stabilize the LUMO. Um, now, we got to answer the question, is this more electrophilic than the acyl chloride? The answer is no. The acyl chloride is more electrophilic than the ketone, and for these reasons. There is still a net positive charge that builds up on this carbon. Uh, there is a net negative charge from this oxygen, but we do have this chlorine here that is bound, and it withdraws electron density. Chlorine being a fairly electronegative element, it's pulling that electron density to the side and it isn't donating it with its lone pairs. Um, so we get an even stronger net positive charge that's built up on this carbon. So the acyl chloride is more electrophilic than the ketone. All right, up until now, we've had a very interesting discussion about the different electrophilicities of carbonyls. Now I would like to take it to the next level discussing an acid anhydride and this interesting species that we see on the board. In order to understand the difference in these electrophilicities, it is important to ask yourself why. The difference between these two molecules is this leaving group that we see and this leaving group that we see. In this situation, we have two oxygens. In this one, we have an oxygen and a nitrogen. In order to understand why the anhydride is more electrophilic, we must understand that oxygen is much more electronegative than nitrogen. This means that the nitrogen will not pull electron density from the carbonyl as much as the oxygen will. Thus, making the anhydride the most electro, one of the most electrophilic molecules that we see when we, when we discuss carbonyl chemistry. Now just to end this important video on electrophilicity, we have ranked the molecules that we used in our discussion in order from most electrophilic to least. So the acyl chloride taking position number one, right here we have position number two, three, four, and five. And they differ in electrophilicity for the reasons that we discussed earlier. We'd like to thank you for uh, watching our video and we hope you've enjoyed the organic chemistry that we have discussed.